Let me uh, call this meeting to order and let me thank uh, Ranking Member um, Lindsey Graham and the other members of the committee for being with us in person or on video. Uh, I would also like to thank the um, many witnesses uh, who will be testifying today, most of whom who will be joining us remotely uh, because of this um, pandemic. Um, I want to call this hearing uh, to order in order to discuss a very simple, uh, yet I believe profound question. And that question is this. Why should the taxpayers of our country, many of whom are struggling economically as a result of the pandemic, uh, be subsidizing the starvation wages being paid at some of the largest and most profitable corporations in America? That's the simple question. Why should working people be subsidizing some of the wealthiest families and largest corporations in America because of the starvation wages they pay their workers? And let me be very clear. The largest welfare recipient in America happens to be the wealthiest family in America, the Walton family a family that owns the largest corporation in America, Walmart. This is a family that is worth over $200 billion. It is a family that has become $50 billion wealthier since March of 2020, during the worst public health crisis in over 100 years. This corporation that they own, Walmart, made over $15 billion in profit last year alone. And yet, despite this massive family wealth, despite these very high corporate profits, Walmart pays wages so low that tens of thousands of their employees are forced to rely on public assistance in order to survive. They are forced to rely on food stamps to feed their children paid for by the U.S. taxpayer. They are forced to go into public housing to put a roof over their heads, paid for by U.S. taxpayers. And they are forced to go on Medicaid to get the health care they need, all of which is paid by U.S. taxpayers. While Costco, Amazon, Target, Best Buy, and other major corporations have all raised their minimum wage in recent years to at least $15 an hour, and in a few minutes, we're going to hear from the CEO of Costco. The minimum wage at Walmart has remained stuck at $11 an hour for the last three years. The result, 760,000 workers at Walmart. Walmart is the largest employer in America. 760,000 employees, about half of their U.S. workforce, are paid less than $15 an hour. Now, I don't know. Maybe if you are a billionaire family, you may not understand this, but the simple truth is that no one in America can live with dignity, can raise a family on $11 or $12 an hour. And I must say, on a personal level, that I have talked to too many employees in this country who, with tears in their eyes, tell me about the struggles that they are having, trying to feed their kids, pay their rent on the starvation wages that they receive. Today, we're going to ask how Walmart can afford to pay its CEO, who declined my invitation to be with us today, over $22 million in compensation last year. $22 million in compensation, but somehow they cannot afford to pay their workers a living wage. We're going to ask how Walmart can afford to spend $8.3 billion on stock buybacks in 2017, but cannot afford to pay its workers at least 15 bucks an hour. And if Walmart thinks that they're going to avoid answering that question because they didn't show up today, they are deeply mistaken. The American people are sick and tired of subsidizing the wealthiest family in America. Well, let us be clear. Walmart is not alone. Last year, Dollar General made over $10 billion in profits, had enough money to pay its CEO $12 million in compensation, while the average Dollar General cashier 
is forced to survive on just $8.38 an hour. In 2019, McDonald's made over $6 billion in profits and paid its CEO over $18 million in compensation, while the average worker at McDonald's makes as little as $9 an hour. Unfortunately, the CEO of McDonald's also declined to testify before us today. Further, a November 2020 Government Accountability Office report that I requested found that taxpayers are not only subsidizing the poverty wages at Walmart, McDonald's, and Dollar General, but Dollar Tree, Wendy's, Burger King, Uber, Subway, Dunkin' Donuts, Home Depot, Lowe's, CVS, and Walgreens. We will hear from the author of that GAO report later this morning. In America today, and one of the great scandals of our economy, is that nearly half of all workers make less than $15 an hour, and they are forced to rely on public assistance programs costing taxpayers $107 billion each year. And today we're going to be discussing about what it means to work for a large corporation that makes billions of dollars in profit, but yet as a worker, you're not sure when you wake up in the morning if you're going to have enough food to feed your kids. During this hearing, we're going to hear from employees who work for McDonald's and Walmart. We're going to hear about half of American workers living paycheck to paycheck. We're going to hear about the fact that the federal minimum wage of $7.25 an hour has not been raised by Congress since 2007. Got that? Minimum wage not been raised by Congress since 2007, 14 years ago. And let us be clear, no ifs, buts, and maybes. $7.25 an hour is a starvation wage. That's what it is. We must raise the minimum wage to a living wage, at least $15 an hour. And when we do that, not only will we be lifting millions of Americans out of poverty, we will be providing a raise to 32 million American workers. And not only is raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour the right thing to do, it is also what the overwhelming majority of Americans want us to do. Poll after poll, over 60 percent of the American people have told us that they support increasing the minimum wage to $15 an hour. Since 1998, every time a state has had an initiative on the ballot to raise the minimum wage, it has won, no matter whether that state was red, blue, or purple. Today, eight states and over 40 cities have adopted laws to raise the minimum wage to 15 bucks an hour. This is not a radical idea. Now, I do understand that concern has been raised about the Raise the Wage Act, which I have sponsored, which gradually raises the minimum wage to $9.50 this year, $11 in 2022, $12.50 in 2023, $14 in 2024, and $15 an hour in 2025. That's a gradual increase. Some people believe that these increases will harm small businesses. I understand that. Now, I fully understand that there is a major difference between Walmart and a small, struggling business. Many small businesses, all of us understand, are struggling today in Vermont, South Carolina, all across this country, and they need our help. To date, Congress has already provided $800 billion in financial assistance to small businesses and an additional $50 billion is included in the reconciliation bill working its way through the Senate. I am also sympathetic to providing small businesses with the tax relief that they need to offset some of the increased labor costs associated with the minimum wage increase, just as Congress has done virtually every time that it has increased the minimum wage. But let me say this. Study after study has shown that a gradual increase in the minimum wage does not lead to increased unemployment. In fact, a review of 138 minimum wage increases at the federal, state, and local level since 1984 published in the Quarterly Journal of Economics found no evidence that these laws reduce employment. Zero. My own state of Vermont, for example, a very rural state, largely dependent on small business, has the third lowest unemployment rate in the country at 3.1 percent, while it also has one of the highest minimum wages in the country at $11.75 an hour. In my view, the best way to help small business 
is to put cash into the pockets of low-wage workers who will then spend that money in grocery stores, restaurants, and small businesses all across this country. But I hope, no matter what our views on the minimum wage may be, I hope that we will all agree on one thing. U.S. taxpayers should not be forced to subsidize some of the largest and most profitable corporations in America. It is time for the owners of Walmart, McDonald's, Dollar General, and other large corporations to get off welfare and pay their workers a living wage.